Thank you, Pastor Gary. All right, well, good evening, everybody. It's good to see you all here. And once again, we do welcome all of our online students. Over 270, that's, that's people that have uh, registered to be a part of the school as well. And, uh, you know, obviously salvation is free for us. It cost him everything. But in the development of your spiritual gifts, your treasure is where your heart is. Your heart is where your treasure is. And so, you know, it's worth people's time, a facility, upkeep, and all of that. You all believe in investing in the development of your spiritual gifts and callings. And as the verse I quoted last night, Hebrews, I, I believe it's chapter 5, that says, by reason of use, our spiritual gifts are developed and um, so I think this is a worthy worthy cause I think school of the prophets is one of the most important things every ministry is equally important but I believe it's so important because we need in these days a company of people that can hear God's voice clearly clearly hear God's voice and then interpret it right because it's one thing to get the revelation then the second level, you got to get the correct interpretation once you get the revelation. Then once you get the interpretation, you got to find the application. And then once you get the application, you got to know the timing. That's quite a bit, isn't it? And it's only by reason of use, by practice, by, as that verse I read to you last night, it's important that we do that. We have our spiritual senses trained. So tonight I'm going to speak on the subject of uh, the way of an eagle. You know, the prophetic as always, as long as I've been around, has been typified or the analogy has been made of the eagle comparable to uh, the prophetic gifts, the prophet himself or herself. And um, it just so happens that today... I didn't really get to meet any of the students. I don't get a, a list of who the students are ahead of time or anything like that. But today I met someone who, you know, I talked about last night the uh, conference I did with Ken Fish uh, three or four weeks ago in Atlanta. And uh, we played the clip last night for you where I would showed you that ahead of time I had written down an hour before the service a word of knowledge um, never had been to the church. I saw that there was a man sitting uh, in the, looking back from the platform was where I was having the vision, the platform, looking back to the back row to the far right, and he had a gray shirt on and white hair, and the time stamp on my note app on my phone, Ken Fish, everybody saw it, and I saw the man had a heart condition. Well, he was delivered of that heart condition, and in that same conference, it might have been the same night, I'm not sure, but I met a guy here today who was at that conference, and the word that I gave him was pretty supernatural. Uh, it's pretty hard to uh, come, you know, to deny, and it goes along with my message tonight. And so I instantly felt the prompting of the Lord, is Arnold here? Is he here tonight? Oh, there he is, my goodness, right there. Come on up here, if you will. Join me up here just a minute. Would you welcome Arnold Dallas, one of our students. Now, Arnold, if you will, just join me here, and they're going to play the clip of me giving you the word in the uh, service in Atlanta. And you and I had never met before that, never, never spoke. Never spoke. Um, none of this, there's no way I could have known. Uh, and so... You were a visitor there as well. Uh, yeah, at the church I was speaking at. So play the clip, if you will, because this is what we're aiming for and also, beyond. Okay, so the vision opened just now, and this is as real. I'll take it to the judgment if I'm in any way misportraying what's happening here. I saw an encounter someone has had, and it was an eagle that got into the house. And it, and it was, was a, a visitation, visitation of the Lord. An, An eagle came into the house in this, in this encounter. encounter. Something, Something to do with an eagle in the, in the house visiting your home, and it was the prophetic visiting you. 
and I know that this person is here. I just clearly saw you. It's you? What was it, a dream? Stand up, sir, if you will. How long ago was it? A week ago. Could I know that at all? Is there any way I could know that? We've never spoken. Isaiah 40, 31. Write, write those, those, num those numbers are significant for you, 40 and 31, write that down. Isaiah, Isaiah 40, 31, they that wait, wait upon, upon the Lord, Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. There was, there was a part, part to the dream that was mysterious, mysterious though, that didn't make sense, sense that you didn't, didn't understand. understand. Okay. okay. The eagle in your, was it your house? Yeah. Well, here's what the Lord would want you, to know, want you to know. This eagle that you had visit you, I, oh, a few days ago, I can't say what day it was, I've, I, as I slept at night, came into someone's house and there was a darker colored like couch or love seat and this person I knew that I was encountering a Lord, uh, having an encounter of the Lord with them in the night. I don't know if that is you, may not be you, but here's what the Lord is saying to you. He's brought you to this conference. The eagle is here. The prophetic ministry is symbolized by the eagle. A week later, what came to your house has come to this church. Do you attend church here? No. Okay. Well, there's good news for you because it's something that is already in you and I'm believing I'm going to make and say a prayer you have a John like anointing, anointing. Your, dad's your dad's name's John, John and your brother's name's, name's John. John well, well I, I guess, guess that runs in the family, the family. <laughs> we've, we've never, never met or spoken, spoken. Is, there is there any way I could know you were coming to this, to this? okay, okay. His, his dad's, dad's name, name and his brother's name is John, name is John. In, in Jesus, Jesus Christ's name, name let, let him be caught up, up into, into the third, third heaven like, like John. John. Yeah. The, yeah. the eagle has, has visited your home, your my brother, brother and, and you will, will begin, begin to see, as I pray right, right now in activation prayer, prayer you're going to begin to see and feel impressions, impressions visions, and, and dreams, dreams are going to dramatically increase. increase. And the, and the Lord, Lord also has a healing gift for you. you. In, In fact, fact have, you, has you, have, you have you ever been used in the gift of healing? healing? I, don't I don't know why. why. I, I see fire in your left hand, hand and I see, I see it from, from here down, down your, your back, back right, right now. now. I don't know what that means. L5, S1. L5, S1. Be healed, be healed right, right now. now. That's, the, that's, that's that amber light, light right, right down, down your spine. spine. And, the and the gift that God, God gives us is not for ourselves, ourselves it's for others. others. So, so I'm going to pray for you, for you to get your healing, healing to, have to have a backbone and a spine of steel so that, so that you can develop in maturity the gift of the prophetic. prophetic. Amen. Here's, Here's the thing. You can't, you can't say, say that's, that's a vague dream that an eagle comes to someone's house, into someone's house. But, but God, God visited you, you and he's going to continue to visit you and your, and your spiritual, spiritual eyes, eyes, ears, and, and see, taste, hear, smell, and touch, Hebrews 5, 14, by reason of use, your spiritual senses have been opened because you've exercised them. So I mag temporarily magnify my office and I turn the key within your heart to acceleration. That's a word that God has spoken to at least six people for this meeting. Acceleration. If God has spoken that word to you, acceleration, this week, preparing to come to this meeting, stand up. Stand up if it's for you. Stand up. Just quickly. I got five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I said at least six. But acceleration. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the prophetic, prophetic acceleration, as you increase, as you train your senses, may they develop in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I add something for you? 
the, the guy that was originally called. But what I'm going to ask you your name first, just because I'm curious. What is your name? Your name is Dallas. Arnold. Arnold. Arnold Dallas. Huh. When Chris was prophesying to you, I was seeing a picture of William Seymour. Now. <laughs> You're going to see more. That's the eagle eye. <laughs> He's going to see more. Now, Arnold, I'm glad that you're in the School of the Prophets, and uh, we met less than a month ago or so. But didn't you have a back procedure or something scheduled that week, following that word? Yeah. And so a week before, I gave you this word sometime around... I don't know, August 11th or 12th, something like that. Uh, you had, a week before that, had a dream where an eagle came into your house. Yeah. Well, if you will, just in one or two minutes, share with the audience the significance, because this isn't for my sake, this is for their sake. Um, the Lord was just revealing, now that wasn't public knowledge, I couldn't have known you had that dream. No, okay. All right, so if you will, just share the significance and just totally relax. It's all right. We're family here. What was significant about the word and, and what is the fruit or the result since then? So just a couple of things. Um, I had a tragedy. Um, I lost my mom and my sister in 21 to COVID. My sister was a registered nurse. And so I kind of was coming back from a very dark place, which is you know, like the, the couch you saw, that's my living room. Um, I was a caretaker for my mom, and, um, you know, they were the ladies in my house. I'm not married yet. And um, so basically, in the dream and the vision, the eagle crashed through the windows of my top house. It's a two-story foyer. And then it stood, like, right there, like, right before the couch. So that was significant to me because, you know, I, I saw it as a sign that, you know, God was like visiting in that dark place um, to, you know, give me the things I needed as far as rescue for me. And you don't know this, but two days before that, I had a dream of my mom of what something was trying to participate as my mom. And um, what, what I said was that, Mom, I'm going to make you so proud and tell my Lord and Savior I'm going to make him so proud too. So that was Wednesday, and this vision was, um, I mean, when you came and gave the prophetic word, that was Friday. So, so Friday night was the first meeting, uh, and as I said, I came in late. But I just think it's so cool that since tonight I'm going to be speaking about the way of the eagle, that it was fitting that Gary read just a minute ago from Revelations chapter 4 or 5 where it talks about the four living creatures, the face of the ox, the face of the man, one of them being the face of the eagle. And so by Revelation, uh, did it shock you when I called that out? I'm just curious. Like, um, Is it on? One, yeah, it's on. There you go. 100% it shocked me. Because when you <laughs> said dream, you know, since I had just had that dream Wednesday, I was like, I didn't know where you were going to go with it. <laughs> and, um, you know, I didn't understand it, you know, the, the crash of the eagle, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you said dark couch. My couch is not dark, but I understood what the interpretation was and what it yep. The so, darkness of the one perhaps yep. covering the one sitting on the couch. Yep. Well, thank the Lord that... Um, you know, he not only revealed that, but then also your back condition and your dad and your brother's name. And, and uh, so uh, I think the prophetic visited you, and now you're at the School of the Prophets, which is three and a half hours from where we saw each other the first time. And I, so I'm glad you're here. And we're just going to agree that the eagle is going to visit everybody's house. It's in the School of the Prophets. And registration's still open at mssop.com. Thank you so much, Arnold, for sharing your testimony. We're glad you're a part of SOP. God bless you. 
You just saw Prophetic Chronicles live at SOP. Yeah, so anyways, I appreciate him so much sharing that. All right, now I'll get back to the message. How many of you wants the eagle to visit your house? That characteristic side of the Lord. And so, Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 18 and 19 says this, There be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not, the way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. Well, I'm going to leave that last one alone. I suggest you do too, because you'll never figure that one out. But uh, the, fir <laughs> the first one being there, uh, the way of an eagle in the air. And what he said was there, that there are three things which are too wonderful for me. He was really saying there are three things that are full of wonder, causes you to wonder. When you say the word wonderful, you're saying it's full of wonder. And the Greek word, excuse me, the Hebrew, because this is Old Testament, the Hebrew word pala means full of wonder, which is the word used there. And we know that the way of the eagle, has anybody ever studied much about eagles or uh, ever saw any? Um, where I used to live in Indiana, one time we, we saw, I think it was like 15 of them in a tree one time. And then the Lord began kind of downloading this message in my heart because two or three weeks ago, it was right around the time that I gave Arnold that word about the dream that he'd had the week before that meeting. Uh, Andreas Keller and his wife was at our home, and you know we welcomed him back to the United States. They, they lead a work in Switzerland, and uh, his dad was kind of like the, a prophet to Europe. Um, and he was just an incredible man. But anyway, uh, his son, Andreas, is too. And while we were there, we were kind of talking about this very thing. And in my backyard here, locally, um, two golden eagles came and landed in the tree and was looking at us in the window. Golden eagles. And I, that's the first time since I've lived here that I, we had seen eagles. And so... The eagle really is majestic. It's something hard and to grasp, to fully understand. The way of an eagle in the air left the writer of Proverbs chapter 30 with this certain feeling of amazement or awe. And he's like, it's just beyond for me to grasp. It's so full of wonder I can't articulate this. So we're going to try to digest a little bit and just try to touch a little bit of that wonder and amazement and that majesty of the eagle whether it's perched on a cliff or high in the sky now God has a lot to say in his word about eagles you know the Bible mentions eagles over 30 times and it could be argued from scripture and I'll show you tonight that God wants us to be eagle Christians eagle prophets prophetic people and to be an eagle Christian really means that you are more than a conqueror you got your wings you're soaring high and in the Bible God likens his children to eagles more than once he protects and feeds his children just as an eagle protects and feeds the eaglets and I just want to look at for a little bit tonight about the eagles parallel to the life of a believer you know when Jesus was being tempted by Satan in the wilderness um, you remember when Jesus was tempted to turn stones into bread um, Jesus responded to him and said man should not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God one way that could be translated is as fed from the beak. Just like a baby eagle is fed by the mother eagle, fed by the beak. So every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God becomes our eagle food. And tonight we're going to get some eagle food. Because eagles, 
don't eat uh, the same food that vultures do. And we're going to talk about that in just, just a little bit of time here tonight. Now, eagles are unique in the fact that they certainly are born to soar. God created the eagle for the purpose, the unique purpose, to soar. Not to flap its wings and wear itself out, but to soar. And as such, he is a picture, the eagle is, of the believer who is born again to live that victorious life. Now think about this for just a minute. An eaglet is born into a nest that is actually built and constructed for his personal comfort. When the mother eagle lays the eggs, she creates this incredibly large and huge nest for it to be protected and, 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 and taken care of. And the eaglet's every need is met by its parents. If he's hungry, he's fed. If he's tired, he sleeps. If, he, if it rains, he's covered by his parents' wings. If there's a threat, he's defended from harm. Makes me think of Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And under his feathers or his wings, we would find shelter. Now, the eagle's nest is like the secret place for the believer, the place of fellowship and intimacy with the Lord and communion with him. You see, the eagle, after it's born, has no real desire to leave the nest. He's very comfortable, and as an eaglet, if he never flies, if he's never forced to get out of that nest eventually, he'll never truly be an eagle. He will live unfulfilled. And that eagle, if it doesn't fly, will never know the joy of doing what it was created to do. And so the mother eagle spends time preparing that eaglet for the moment when it first takes its flight. See, God did not create the majestic, wonderful eagle to sit in the comfort of its nest forever or to walk on the ground like a chicken or a turkey. The eagle was made different. It was made to fly. And you'll never soar with the eagles if you keep nesting with the chickens. The eagle was not created to flutter like the sparrow, flipping from limb to limb, flapping wildly, aggressively against the winds of the storm, just trying to stay in the air. No, an eagle was created to soar. It's been designed and created specifically to soar above the heights. Its body is uniquely made, unlike other birds, to be able to withstand the air pressure at certain heights that other birds can't. That is an eagle's created purpose. So, School of the Prophets, I just want to say to you tonight, I hope that you're getting this and what I'm going to be sharing with you this evening because you have a created purpose too. You are a company of eagles. You are not created to be bound to the earth, bound to the world, or to struggle against the storms of life. You are not created to be earthbound. You were created to soar in victory. Amen. There's something interesting else, several things about the eagle that's just really unique and special. The mating process is really interesting. It's not just about love for the eagle. It's also about future stability and consistency. So when an eagle sees a potential mate, there's a game of tag. Scientists have discovered that ensues between the male and the female eagle. It's the eagle form of playing hard to get. And this game of tag could really last for days. The female eagle tests before she trusts. And she wants to know if the male eagle is 
going to be a long, loyal, enduring mate. Do you know that eagles mate for life? The female eagle does this thing in this game of tag, and scientists have discovered this. She will take a stick up in the air, approximately eight to 10,000 feet high, and drop the stick. And the male eagle has to catch the stick before it touches the ground. Seriously. The male eagle has to then return the stick back to the female eagle, and then the female eagle takes the stick up and drops it again, repeat. And each time the male catches it before it touches the ground, the female eagle flies a little lower and a little faster and drops the stick again. And the test ends when the female eagle is flying low and flying fast, around 500 feet from the ground this time, and she drops the stick, and if the male cannot catch the stick in time, game over. <clears throat> And the female eagle will actually chase the male eagle away. But if the male eagle catches the stick, the female eagle is satisfied that the male eagle will be able to catch the falling eaglets when she's training them to fly. Only then will she allow him to mate with her. So, you see, it's not just a game. She's building a future. She's acting out a prophetic act. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against you from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies. A nation whose tongue you shall not understand. Job chapter 9 and verse 26. They are passed away as the swift ships, as the eagle that hastes to the prey. Have you ever noticed how the Bible describes an eagle as being swift to the prey? It's right there in Job 9, 26. And it truly is. An eagle can fly, get this now, up to 90 miles per hour. Now let that just sink in just a minute. It can go from almost stationary to 90 miles an hour in a dive to catch its prey. It truly is swift to the prey, as Job says. But what makes the eagle so swift to the prey? Well, there are several things that cause the eagle to be able to be swift to the prey. First, number one, the eagle has a good vantage point. Job 39, 27 says this, Does the eagle mount up at thy command and make her nest on high? So after the two eagles mate, which, by the way, is for life, they begin to build their home. And the first step is to seek a high and inaccessible location, a place that would almost be impossible for predators to reach that nest because there's precious cargo inside. The baby eaglets need protection, so the eagle builds its nest far above the world, out of the reach of other birds that can't get to them, out of the reach of the enemy. You see, eagles are known to make huge nests as well. There have been eagle nests found that were up to nine feet across. That's a big nest. And weighing two tons. Because of the size of the nest, eagles usually build them in the solid branches of a huge tree or the rocky part of a cliff. Now this gives the eagle a great vantage point. And he can see literally all around. I mean, talk about 
an eagle eye. Talk about a high heavenly perspective, a heavenly outlook. Nothing obstructing its view. It's high enough to where it can see all the way around. Ephesians 2, verses 4 through 6. But God, who is rich in His mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved, and has raised us up together, and made us sit together, sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You say, well, I'm just walking around here in an earth suit in the body. No, well, but you don't live from there. See, if you live from here, then your perspective is just going to be what's happening on the ground. No, you need a 10,000-foot view. Seated with Christ. That's why it says in Revelation uh, that Gary was quoting from Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 5, it says that there were 24 seats around the throne. There was one sitting on the throne and 24 seats around the throne. The 24 elders. And it's interesting how that they were seated. Well, it shouldn't surprise us because Paul told us in Ephesians, we are seated with him in heavenly places. It means we're at rest. We're trusting in the Spirit. We're believing in the finished work. The work's already been done. He already paid for your healing. You're already healed. You're already, you, your, your salvation has already been purchased. And so it's not a matter of getting God to heal you. By His stripes you were healed, past tense. It's not a matter of whether He saved you. No, it's just a matter of appropriating what He did at the cross and manifesting it and bringing it from that realm and translating it to this realm. Well, I don't know if it's the Lord's will to heal me. That, you don't have to ask that question. That's been settled. He already did heal you. He was the lamb slain from before the foundation of the world. By his stripes you were healed. He died for the sins of the whole world. Now you have to appropriate through faith in the work of the cross and that is what will bring about the grace of God to translate what is finished in that spirit realm, the eternal realm, and bring it down into this realm. But the truth is we're seated with Him in heavenly places. We can live in a high place with God, in a high dimension. So not only does the eagle have a great high vantage point, but it has keen eyesight. You've probably heard of the eagle eye. Job chapter 39 and verse 28 and 29, she dwells and abides on the rock, upon the crag of the rock and the strong place. From there she seeks the prey, and her eyes behold far off. An eagle will sit high atop on top of a rock, and from there it can expertly scan the horizon up to a half of a square mile from where it's stationed. That's pretty incredible. That's perspective. That's the ability to see. He can spot an animal as small as a mouse from a half a mile. And once he spots his prey, his eyes lock onto it. He gets that eagle eye. And he launches out to capture it. Now hear this, this is important. No matter what obstacle will come into the eagle's way, the eagle will navigate the obstacle and will never lose focus until it has seized its prey. That's a big deal, folks. And this is something else that God wants the Christian eagle to learn from the eagle. The reason why some of us never reach new levels of spiritual growth or new levels of prophetic revelation is we, is we allow things to distract us. we got to stay focused on the things of God, learn how to navigate the obstacles until we reach our spiritual potential and our prophetic goal. Do you know that an eagle can look directly into the sun at midday without damaging its eyes? Now we're talking about, remember, behold the wonder of the eagle that's beyond finding out. It's because an eagle has two sets of eyelids. 
One set of the eyelids are for hunting prey. But the other set is designed by God to allow the eagle to fly directly toward the sun, and the eagle uses this to its advantage. One of the enemies to the eagle is the condor. In fact, the condor is the largest bird, one of the largest in the world. But do you know that the eagle can easily avoid the condor if the condor pursues the eagle as prey? Because the eagle will simply soar into the direction of the sun and it will blind the condor and he'll lose track of the eagle. I hope you're catching the point here. But the third thing that gives the eagle such incredible swiftness to the prey is an eagle spends little time flapping its wings usually only on takeoffs and landings and of course you know course correction but it doesn't wear itself out or burn itself out flapping its wings no here's what it does it glides on the wind it doesn't flap around trying to make headway no it simply soars on the power of the wind now, after takeoff, it sets its wing joint and it lets the wind current carry it in its direction. Now, think about it. Its body is made to soar to heights that other birds can't, the vultures can't, the crows can't, the sparrows can't. It can outrun the predator because it has two sets of eyelids. It can look into the sun and the enemy will lose track of it because it keeps its focus on the sun, S-O-N. It doesn't get distracted. It has great perspective because it remains in a spiritual elevation, a height that not everybody reaches. And it soars on the wind. Now, this is the secret to his speed and strength. It's like he floats in the air, he or she, eagle, or soars against the wind. And this needs to be the secret to our strength, too, as Christian eagles, to live our lives carried out by the power of the Spirit of God. Now, listen to this. Scientists tell us that up to 40% of all eagles will die before they reach maturity. That's alarming. 40% don't make it past a certain age. The question is why? Number one, the biggest reason why 40% don't make it, don't continue to live, is they leave the nest before they're ready. They leave the nest without parental protection. And friends, I want you to know this is an illustration of a believer that gets ahead of God and seeks to do things before it's time. Ask the prodigal son in Luke 15. Who wanted his inheritance before he was mature enough to take care of it and be a good steward of it. And he spent it frivolously on riotous living and on harlots. He wasn't mature enough. He wasn't ready enough to be trusted with that much inheritance. I don't know about you. I want God to be able to trust me with the fullness of the inheritance. And it's only maturity that will cause him to be able to give it to you. And the story of the prodigal son, there's a lot to that story. But one of the main emphasis of that story is don't try to function in your inheritance as a son or daughter of God before you're mature enough to be a good steward of it. Because how many people have found shipwreck who were gifted and anointed, but their, love, their fruit of the Spirit level did not match their level of gifting. Their level of maturity was not commensurate with their level of gifting. Character will keep you where gifting will take you. 
Maturity will keep you where gifting will take you. Second reason why 40% of all eagles will die before they reach maturity is the second reason they try to fly like other birds. <clears throat> they try to have church like other groups. They try to prophesy like other prophets. They try to do it like they've always seen it done. They don't think outside the box. The truth is, an uh, eagle flies, but it doesn't have to flap its wings and burn itself out and get tired and not use the wind to its advantage. And if we're going to soar like the eagle, we've got to learn how to use the wind to our advantage. Have you noticed how that the Bible connects the Holy Spirit and the wind together? Talk about being led by the Spirit. And tonight, anybody that needs the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can get it tonight before we leave. And we're going to pray if you don't have it, you're going to get it before you leave. That's a good place to start. John chapter 3, verse 8, the wind blows where it will. And you hear the sound thereof, but you cannot tell where it comes and where it goes. And so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. The wind. Acts chapter 2, verse 2. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing, mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the ability. So when we seek to act without the power of the Holy Spirit, we're actually trusting in the working of our flesh, the work of the flesh, the strength of the flesh, the arm of the flesh. Flapping incessantly and never letting the wind catch you and you set your wing joint and let the wind carry you is, an, is, is a picture of a Christian eagle that is trusting in its works or its ability and it is not living the life in this, of the Spirit, walking in the Spirit. But it's trying too hard and wearing itself out when it just needs to catch the wind of the Spirit. If the eagle comes into a storm, they react differently than other birds. They set their wings and soar directly into the storm. When all the other birds fly away, the eagle soars into it. The velocity of the wind lifts them above the storm. Unlike other birds, the eagle loves the storm. And I'll tell you something, true prophetic eagles, you learn to appreciate your trials and your tests. You know, the scripture says it's through many tribulations we enter the kingdom of God. But the Americanized gospel much of the time has caused us to rebuke those trials as though it's the devil or in reality. Every trial and test and difficulty you go through can be a gateway or a portal or an opening to a closer connection to the kingdom of God and to the king himself. Don't despise your trials. When the clouds gather, they, the eel can sense the storm before it's there. I don't know about you, but sometimes I can sense one before the clouds show up too. I can feel it in my joints. <laughs> because they can use the wind from the storm to actually soar higher, which is what they keep trying to do. Higher, 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 higher. It's what they were made for. So the eagle Christian must learn to rest in the storm and not fight the storm or fight against the storm as many Christians do and if we look at the storms of life correctly we too can get excited like Paul remember in the boat when the angel of God was with him and he told everybody on the boat that this ship is going to be destroyed and that there was a wind that was coming you're a Clyden that was, that was going to come they weren't expecting it at that time uh, the wind seemed non-adversarial at that point and um, everybody else was frantic but Paul was at peace he wasn't afraid of the storm because he was an eagle 
And it actually allowed Paul to soar higher because nobody believed him before they took sail that his God was real or that an angel of God was there with him. But after the storm tore up the boat that they were on, over 200 people suddenly saw this man is an eagle. His God is real. He's getting information from a divine source. You can get excited when the storms of life come knowing that God wants to lift us up to higher places and you can mount up with wings as eagles. Isaiah 40 and verse 31, one of my favorite verses. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. Beloved, the Holy Spirit can lift us up above the storms of this life and lift us above all the problems and the attacks of the enemy and the thunder and the lightning and the hail and the wind and the rain if we would simply soar by the power of the Spirit of God, the storm can be a blessing. And the wind of the storm can actually cause you to soar higher. But along with using the wind, the eagle's also very careful. This is important. The eagle's also careful not to eat things that will weaken the strength of its wings. You must regulate your spiritual appetite and spiritual diet. Eagles are not scavengers like the vulture. Please hear this. Eagles only eat fresh meat. They don't feed on dead things because they're eagles. Don't weaken your ability to soar, the heights that an eagle can soar and the winds that the Holy Spirit can take that eagle. Don't hinder your ability by feeding upon dead things, on junk. Listen, guard your eyes, guard your ears, guard your heart from dead works of the flesh an eagle prepares for his day by cleaning his feathers you remember how it says in the book of revelation on the judgment day the great uh, that great day of the lord how that that there will be a gathering of eagles that will feed upon the enemies of god Wherever the eagles are gathered, they're the, yeah, Matthew 24. And so, an eagle prepares for his day by cleaning his feathers with a natural uh, oil. And this natural oil cleans away the grime and the dirt and the parasites that will affect his health or suck the blood or the life out of him or hinder his ability to soar. And that daily cleaning process of the eagle is another great lesson for the Christian. Washed by the water of the word. That's what the Bible says. The initial Christian cleansing is water baptism. But the ongoing cleansing is that we are washed by the water of the Word, daily reading the Word, hearing the Word of God taught and preached has a cleansing effect on us and will wash the dirt and grime buildup of the world that we pick up during the week. The initial Christian cleansing is water baptism, Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the initial cleansing. But the ongoing cleansing is by the washing of the water of the Word. Anybody ever come into a service and you felt the weight of the world, the grime of the world, the dirt of the world collect on you during the week and be around people that are just carnal and people that are not Christ-like, and then you come into a service and you hear a message preached that's anointed with the fire of the Holy Spirit, and there's something like lifts off of you and you feel clean and fresh again because you've been washed by the water of the Word.
Start the day with discipline devotion. You got to get in the Word every day. Develop a discipline of getting in the Word. Sometimes you have to force yourself at first. But then after a while, you'll feel like something's missing from your day if you don't read and get into the Word. Amen. Learning to soar. Deuteronomy 32, 11. I like this one. Catch this verse. As an eagle stirs up her nest, fluttering over her young, spreads abroad her wings, takes them, and bears them on her wings. You see, the eaglet, the baby eagle, has a fairly short time to learn how to fly and to learn how to hunt. Eaglets are normally born in the spring. So scientists have found that they must, through study, they found that they must acquire their necessary skills during the summer and the fall. And the first winter of an eaglet's life is where most of the time the 40% don't make it because it's the most dangerous. If the eaglet's not learned the necessary skills to live, then obviously it will die. He's got to learn how to use the abilities that God gave him. Learn how to harness the wind to his advantage in order to catch his prey. Listen, some of you, you felt like all week the devil's been after you. I think the tables need to turn. You are not the prey forever, constantly. No, you're turning around and you are the predator of the devil. You need to tell the devil to go to hell. Or chase him back to hell. So in order to catch his prey or to navigate storms or to soar higher, the mother eagle knows that her eaglet is created to soar. So when the time is right, she begins to take certain steps to encourage that baby eaglet to start to fly. It doesn't get it all at once. You're not going to understand everything about the prophetic the first month of the School of the Prophets. Remember I said last night, stay in it for the long haul. Stay in it for the long journey. Some months we may talk about subjects that aren't your favorite, but we've got to cover the whole counsel of God. One of the first things that a mother eagle will do is she will stop bringing him food every day. Anybody ever heard the term empty nesters? How many of you are empty nesters? <laughs> How many of you have 18 or 19-year-old kids still living at home? You'll relate to this mother eagle then. She stops bringing him food every day. And when she does bring food, she doesn't bring him the best. She don't bring him a T-bone steak. She brings him a 99-cent cheeseburger. She's seeking to, <laughs> to build a desire in the eaglet's heart to go out on its own and search out for better provisions. You can't live off of your mom and dad's spiritual life or your spiritual parents. You've got to get out and soar yourself and go to heights and get your own food because I want to tell you, some of you are, may have been milk drinkers before this school of the prophets, but God has given you teeth because the fully mature have teeth to be able to eat meat and not just depend upon milk, having their spiritual senses exercised. By reason of use, by reason of practice, they're able to develop their discernment to know, to see, taste, hear, smell, and touch in the realm of the Spirit. Spirit. sometimes the mother will bring nothing for several days and the eaglet's forced to feed off of the bits of dead carcasses that have fallen to the floor of the once comfortable nest and he's forced to live off his parents past provisions and the eaglet's got to learn the value of <clears throat> daily manna. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. 
What does that mean? God is constantly speaking. You cannot keep living off of 20-year-old 20, 20 words. Hold on to them, but don't let that be your daily manna. Don't let your experience with God five years ago be the thing that keeps you. No, get a new encounter with the Lord. Get a new throne room encounter. Get back into the Word and get a hold of some of that eagle food. See, she's trying to destroy the eaglet's comfort zone. Not because she stops loving the eaglet, but because she wants the eaglet to fulfill its purpose, and that is to fly and not die stuck on the ground. She wants the eaglet to get uncomfortable. <clears throat> I'll just tell you this. Some of you, God has allowed you to get uncomfortable where you're at spiritually. You know, God has a way of getting us to leave our comfort zone. I hate even using that word because that word became like a buzzword in the church for like two decades, comfort zone. Everybody was saying it, right? But, but you, I say it because you get what I'm saying. He doesn't want us to stay immature. He, do, he wants us to grow. He wants us to reach our potential. He doesn't want us to forever be the prey of every circumstance and the prey of every demon that, that comes around and we just let it leech on and vampire and suck the life out of us and every spirit or demon that's roaming the earth do we become vulnerable to. No, you got to grow beyond that. You cannot be constantly susceptible to every demon that is going throughout the earth seeking whom he may devour you have to become an eagle stop being the prey become the eagle and you'll be the predator when you wake up in the morning the devil will say oh no he's up oh no she's awake <laughs> he wants you to reach your full potential look at this Deuteronomy 32 verse 11 and 12 as an eagle stirs up her nest, flutters over her young, spreads abroad her wings, takes them, bears them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead them, and there was no strange God with him. Now keep in mind that the verse we just read likens God to an eagle. Clear, clear as day. In other words, it was... Papa Eagle <laughs> that led the nation of Israel, the eaglets, out of Egypt, out of the nest. When many of them said, we'd rather just die slaves in Egypt. Papa Eagle. You see, the nest is a special place for the eaglet. It's, yes, it's a place of security and comfort. It's especially prepared to teach the eagle how to fly. The male eagle begins to build the nest by collecting sharp sticks and thorns and putting them on a high crevice of a cliff or on the branch of the high tree, which, which, which is actually preferred. Now, you've got to get this part. He then places branches and twigs on top of the first layers. Then he places more thorns and sharp sticks on top of that. Then finally, he puts a soft layer of grass. God knows what he's doing with us, our lives. He knows what level, spiritual level you're at and whether or not to pull the grass from out from underneath of you. The comfortable grass. The thorns on the outside of the nest are put there to protect it from possible intruders to protect the eaglets from possible intruders. But the thorns on the inside also have a special purpose. They're reserved for the right time to force that eaglet to become an eagle. When the mother stirs up the nest, what she's, as the Bible says, the Lord did. The Lord made Israel uncomfortable in Egypt after 400 years. They were crying out to God for deliverance. So what does it do when it says, as the eagle stirs up the nest? What's that mean? She removes the fluffy grass padding and she exposes the sharp objects 
to the backside of the eaglet. Talk about a thorn in your rear end. Literally. She is purposefully trying to make her child uncomfortable. You thought it was the devil. The devil's been defeated. God's trying to prune you back so you'll produce more fruit. She's purposefully taunting her child to leave the nest and to give the eaglets thoughts of leaving the nest. Well, my gosh, if mom's only going to bring me food every five days and all I got to eat is leftovers and they're going to take my bed away and now I'm going to sleep on thorns, mom don't love me no more. Now we laugh, but how many times has your life got uncomfortable and you've said that same thing about God? Turned the tables on you, didn't I? Whoops. Well, God must not love me no more. He's left me. He's abandoned me. Look at all I'm going through. Look what all that's happened. You can't control always what happens to you, but you can control how you respond to it. Oh, that was better than, than that was a better statement than, than the response. Let's practice a little. I say something good, you say amen. So I say something good. Amen. Oh, that was, we need a, something good. Amen. Something good. Amen. Something good. Amen. Got to activate you a little bit. Stir as the eagle stirs the nest. God's going to put a thumbtack on your pew chair. <laughs> you're going to sit down and you're oh my! Something got a hold of me. <laughs> well, I thought it was funny. Anyway. Second thing the mother eaglet or the mother uh, eagle does is that she flutters over her young. First she stirs the nest, then she flutters over the young. She taunts the eaglet with food. She dangles a carrot on a stick just out of his reach. Some of you felt you've been there spiritually before. And she'll flutter above him until he lifts himself up because he's hungry enough and he's tired of sitting on the thorns and so he's going to put those wings to use. He's been comfortable in the nest till now. And guess what? If that eagle gets up, is willing to try and is willing to reach for that brass ring, willing to reach for that dangling candy, the food, the eagle's food, if, she, if the eagle eaglet starts trying to fly and it falls... Remember what they'll do? Remember the game of tag with stick? Fetch stick. She'll swoop under it, lift the baby eaglet up, and the process begins. Keep them uncomfortable. Keep the eagle food just from within their reach. Force them to get to take on their wings. And when they slip and fall, I'm going to come down and... I'm going to flutter over the young, and I'm going to make sure that as long as they're trying, I'm going to come under them with eagle's wings. That's what it says. She bears them up on eagle's wings. Deuteronomy 32, 11 says that. That's, there's the verse. She bears them up on her wings. God mentioned this same concept in Exodus 19 and verse 4. He said, You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. God's point was when the Jews couldn't protect themselves, God took care of them. But this implies that there are some things. There are some things that God prepares us for, that He trains us for, and then He expects us to do our part as a response of faith. Faith without works is dead. It's not that God wants us to fly in our strength or our ability, but He wants us to leave our comfort zone and fulfill our created purpose and not be a clucking chicken in the ground, but an eagle soaring on the wind. 
There comes a point when the mother stops doing for the eaglet the things the eaglet could actually do for itself. She forces that eaglet to grow up, to mature. She stops bringing the daily food for her young. She's not trying to harm her child. She's trying to get the, eagle to, the eaglet to fly. They sang the song tonight. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. All that is within me, bless His name. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits. He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your diseases. He redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with loving kindness and mercy. He satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. What promises we have. He heals your diseases, pardons your iniquities, redeems your life from the pit. Anybody ever got in the pit? Fell into the pit? Satisfies you with good things. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, all that's within me. Bless His name. I got a question for you tonight. Are you hungry for eagle's food? Are you really hungry for that eagle's food? then God is calling you to learn the way of the eagle. Amen. Amen. Psalms 103, that verse 1 through 5 resonates with me. Renewed like the eagle's. There's another verse that I didn't put in the PowerPoint, but I put as a note in my phone. It's Psalm 107, verse 23. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and His wonders in the deep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 107, they that go down to the sea in ships 